Hey everybody, good morning. I hope you're doing well this morning. It is Wednesday morning and uh, it's time for 10 at 10. Uh, once again, it's a little different this morning. I'm having to record uh, for this morning. I have a meeting to go to, so I'm sorry about that, but uh, hopefully uh, you guys uh, are connecting on this morning and I'm thankful for that and glad you guys are uh, tuning in this morning, whether it's now or maybe later in the day. I hope that uh, God uh, is encouraging you today through his word. That's what's most important. I know some of you might be real tired uh, this morning. Uh, some of you stayed up. I watched the debate last night and all I can really say about that debate, I didn't get to watch all of it, but it was just, wow. Um, so that's all I can say. Uh, we're going to be just praying uh, for God to work in this, which he is. God's in control and uh, we're just praying, praying for our country, praying that God would put uh, who uh, he desires uh, in leadership. And that's that's the key. And God's going to do that. He's He's going to work. And so we just trust and lean in on him and uh, and know that God's going to take care of it all. So be praying. Be praying for, for unity in our country. Be praying for the leadership of our country. It's important that we just uh, bathe everything in prayer. So stay focused. Don't be afraid. Uh, don't be uh, scared, nervous. God's got this. And so uh, hold on to him. All right, so here's my joke for the day. Uh, it's this. What's the longest word in the English language? What's the longest word in the English language? Well, it's the word smiles. Smiles. Why? Because the first and last letters are a mile apart. Think about that. First and last letters are a mile apart. Smiles. All right. Hopefully that gave you a little chuckle. All right. Good to, again, good to have you guys getting on this morning. And uh, we're in John chapter 1. So go ahead and have, if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 1. Uh, if not, get your device and we're going to uh, look at John chapter 1. We're going to be looking at just a few verses this morning. We're going to start in verse 35 and kind of walk through. And I'm just going to throw out two important uh, statements that Jesus makes in this little passage. And, and I think it applies to us today as it has always. And Jesus asking us the same things that he asked his first disciples uh, in, in this passage. So John chapter one, and we're starting in verse 35, and it says this, the next day, again, John was standing with uh, two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, behold, the lamb of God. So you have John saying these words again, saying, Behold the Lamb of God. John was adamant about his purpose and role, uh, introducing and, uh, and really ushering in Jesus in, in, uh, in his ministry and letting people know this is God's Son. This is the one who will take away the sins of all the world, the perfect Lamb. And, uh, and so now it goes on and says, the two disciples that were with John heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Now I'll stop there for a second because these, these were disciples. These were me, pe uh, people being taught by John uh, and, and they were following John, yet John was more than happy. Uh, he was ecstatic probably to let them follow Jesus. He wanted them to follow the Lamb of God. He wanted them to uh, to really hang on to the teaching of Jesus because, uh, you know, John was adamant about that. that uh, and we'll read this later, that John uh, had to decrease, Jesus increased, and uh, we, he wanted people to follow him. And uh, what humility. That is great humility. Do you do you have that humility in your life? And do I have that humility in my life that uh, it's not about me or, or us, it's about Jesus. And everything we do hopefully points to him and we want people to follow Jesus, not us. And, and I, I keep being reminded by uh, of that when I hear that song uh, that comes on the radio that uh, is, is so powerful to me and, and it talks about I don't want to leave a legacy. Uh, I want people to remember Jesus. And uh, that's such a, a great song. Uh, and, it, and it kind of reminds me every time I hear it that it's all about Jesus. Are we, are we pointing people to Jesus? Are we ushering them into the presence of Jesus with how we live and act and the words that we say? Well, it goes on, it says this, Jesus turned and saw them following. And he said to them, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and you will see. 
So they came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. So two things happen here that I think really apply to us today and I, they're fascinating to me. The first one is this. This is the question that Jesus asked those uh, two disciples that were following Jesus that were uh, wa uh, walking with him. And, and he said this, what are you seeking? That's a powerful, profound question. Even though it's short in letters and words, it is a profound question that we're asked every day. What are we seeking? You know, we we're called to seek after Jesus and to seek after who he is. And we've done that. If you're a believer, you did that and you sought him and he drew you to him and it's changed your life forever. But on a daily basis, what are we seeking? Are we seeking our own good? Are we seeking uh, our own attention? Are we seeking finance, uh, financial security? What, what are we seeking? And listen, some of those things aren't bad. Uh, you know, seeking financial security is not bad and seeking all that. But what are you seeking first? What is your priority and what you're looking for in life and what you're striving after, I should say, in life? You know, Scripture tells us in uh, Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I want to encourage you today, especially in our crazy uh, uh, world that we live in, which is no different than it always has been, but uh, the one we live in now and the culture we live in is seek God, seek him, seek him first, and you're going to find him uh, in all that you need. Uh, you know, scripture tells us, seek first the kingdom of God. Listen, if, if you have your priorities straight, and you are seeking him above all, then God's gonna work out all things in your life for his glory. And we can trust that and we can lean in on him. And so if you're feeling stressed or have anxiety in your life or fear in your life, then seek the Lord, seek him first. Uh, don't look at presidential candidates, don't look at pres uh, political parties to, to ease the pain or to find the answers, seek Jesus. And that's where we're going to find our purpose and joy and peace and everything that we need. But then he goes on and says this next statement that I think is just as important. And it says, he said to them, come and you will see. So it's not enough just to seek, but come. It means come to him. It means to surrender to him, to follow him. Are you following him? You know, that invitation to experience and know Jesus in an intimate relationship is open to all people. And so he doesn't just ask us the question, what are you seeking? But he also tells us, listen, come, come and you will see what I'm about. Come and, see, and, and experience and have a relationship with me. You know, scripture says this in Psalm 34, verse eight, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The one that, that tastes and, and, and sees that the Lord is good truly uh, dives into a relationship with him and leans in on him and, and gives him all. Uh, listen, that's, that's really the picture we have here. Uh, we hear God calling us. We hear, we hear him asking uh, the, that same question, what are you seeking? I hope you're seeking Jesus. And don't just seek him, but follow him. Uh, be obedient to him. Jump all in and go all in uh, with your relationship with him. And that's where we're gonna find our purpose and find our joy and all that we need. I, what I love how this ends, it says, or this passage says, so they came and saw where he was staying. They followed him and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. This was such a profound time and such a life altering moment that John right here even remembers the hour. He remembers the time, the 10th hour. You know, when we follow Jesus, when we, go all in and dive in in this relationship and we we taste and see that the Lord is good and we experience that relationship with him. Listen, it is so life-changing and so profound and so fulfilling uh, that you uh, it, it changes you. It leaves a mark in your life. You, uh, you are different uh, because of who Jesus is. And, and I want to encourage you in that. Experience that. If you've never given your life to Jesus, make sure that today is the day that you taste and see that the Lord is good and you follow wholeheartedly after him. And it is life altering uh, in your life. All right. Well, thanks guys. Hope that was encouraging to you today. I hope that you have a great day today um, and encourage you to continue to pray. Pray.
pray for each other, pray for our churches, pray for our country, our leadership, pray for unity, not division. And, and listen, God's gonna, God's got this and we can trust in him. All right, let me pray for you and then we'll be done. God, thank you for today. We love you. Uh, we lift you up today. We want to experience that relationship, a deep relationship with you as we follow you and are obedient to you. Uh, thank you for allowing us to uh, know you in such a powerful way. Uh, we love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, remember, this is Wednesday, so uh, hopefully you're connecting with a, some uh, church tonight or some ministries tonight. We, if, if you don't have your own, then we at Hampton, we'd love to have you at Hampton First Baptist. We have our ministry things going on, our, our student ministry and our kids ministry will be going on tonight at 630, and we have an adult Bible study too. If you can't make it, uh, we will be live streaming our adult Bible study, a Wednesday night Bible study at 630, okay? Uh, we're walking through the book of Jude, so um, so tune in, 6.30, and join us as we uh, do Bible study together. It's going to be on Facebook Live, but also YouTube uh, Live, too. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, catch you there, all right? And remember this, no matter where you find yourself today, know that God has put you there for a purpose. So shine bright for Him and be His missionary. God bless you guys, and we will talk to you soon.